Hello, in this video I'm gonna walk you through the financial model Excel template. I will show you the main inputs, the core outputs, reports and charts. So let's get started. On the dashboard you can input your core inputs or drivers for the model, find the core financials or outputs of the model and four charts. The revenue breakdown, profitability, cash flow and cumulative cash flow. So let's start from the core inputs. First of all you should input your interest earning assets, the ended balance of previous year, in this case is 2021 and for the five next years. This is a balance as of the end of the year. There are two main categories, loans and other interest earning assets. So for loans you have up to three categories mortgages, business lending and consumer lending. And also you can input the average interest on loans by years and by categories. The same idea for other interest earning assets. There are three categories, trading assets, securities and other interest earning assets. And you have just one input for average interest on other interest earning assets, also by years. Additionally, you can input your non-interest income. If you do not have it, you can just zero out all the sales and you will have only interest on interest earning assets. The next step is to input the interest bearing liabilities. The same idea. You have four categories with a starting balance as of the end of previous year and five forecasted years. And you have average interest on interest bearing liabilities by years and by categories. Additionally, on top of the dashboard, right above the charts, you may input your provisions for credit losses, the percentage and percentage of charge offs. And you may see some short KPIs like minimum cash and minimum cash months based on the model calculations. statement or profit and loss report shows you the information about your revenue and expenses streams by months for the next five years. So you have the interest income breakdown, interest expenses breakdown, total net interest revenue, non-interest income, total revenue, provisions for credit losses, non-interest expenses. By clicking on this plus you may see the detailization for the variable expenses, for salaries and wages, and for the fixed expenses. You have a total not interest expenses, EBDA, depreciation and amortization, EBIT, corporate tax and net profit after tax. On the cash flow you may see the information about your operating activities by months, investing activities and financing activities. The third statement is the balance sheet, so you may see the assets, liabilities and equity in the monthly format and additionally, you can input your starting values for the cash, for the corporate tax payable, for the ordinary equity and for the retained profits. If you don't have any starting values, you can just zero out the cells and it will work as a startup, starting from the zero. On the QPA step, you may input the industry benchmark value and compare it to the values calculated by the model for the next KPIs. Net loans to total asset share, deposits to total liabilities and equity share, loans to deposits or net loans to deposits, net profit percentage, average interest rate on interest earning liabilities, average interest on interest bearing liabilities and spread between them and finally the net interest income to the revenue share. The same amounts you may see on the charts. As orange you may see the industry benchmark and as a blue values. On the top revenue tab you may see the absolute values of your revenue breakdown by product types and percentage breakdown. So on the top you can see this in tabular form. You have five product types and five years and you can see the absolute values of your revenue. And on the right side you can see the percentage breakdown. 
Below you can see the same information in graphical form. So on the left side you may see the absolute values and percentage breakdown by years. And on the right side you may see the charts with absolute values. A bit below you may see the revenue depths for the selected year. This year is also changeable, so you may review the revenue depths and monthly run rate for, for example, 2024. And finally, you may see the revenue breach between these two years, which are also changeable. So you can set up, for example, from 2022 to 2024, and you may see the main drivers of your revenue growth by different product types. On the top expenses tab, you may find the breakdown of top four expenses categories and all other expenses collapsed into other category. You may see the breakdown of absolute values broken down by years with the total below. And also to the right, you may see the percentage breakdown of these expenses. The same information you may see on the charts below, which you may find the percentage breakdown and the absolute values breakdown. On the couple of charts below, you may find expenses depth and monthly run rate for selected year. You are able to change this year. And you may see the absolute values and percentage breakdown on the pie chart. On the expenses bridge, you may find the main drivers of expenses growth between these two years. These years are, are also changeable. So you may select the first year and you may select the last year. And you may see that total expenses starting in 2020 will change to total expenses in 2024 by this waterfall. On the valuation tab, you may see the calculation of company valuation based on the cost of equity, which you may input here cost of loans you previously inputted in, on the dashboard, calculation of resource share you may see here, there is also tax rate, and here you may find the weighted average cost of capital. In the valuation model there is two valuation methods, which is EBGA multiple and revenue multiple. You may select one of them and below you may input multiple of methods, based on this information we can see terminal value, which is calculated on unlevered free cash flow. You may see the present value of unlevered free cash flow, NPV, and multiplicator evaluation for this particular company. The color coding in the model is very simple. You may change any yellow cell in any yellow sheet within the model. This means that this yellow cell has some input, assumption or driver which impacts the calculation within the model. Blue sheets means that on these sheets there are some charts, reports and other information which can be useful for reporting purposes. On the tabs without color you have some extra calculations related to revenue, to debts, equity, inventory and everything which is needed for the report reporting. Additionally, you have Contents tab, which allow you to navigate across the model very simple. So you may click on any report and you can go back. It is broken down by reports, assumptions, statements and setup. There is short explanation about what each tab does. But if you want to know more, you can go to How To and to see more detailed, ex detailed explanation of what each tab does and what inputs. You may find on this sheet and what kind of outputs you may find on, the, on this sheet as well. Any header of this section is also clickable. So you may click on, for example, book assets and you go directly to this tab. On the wages tab, you can input your headcount by categories with hire and fire date, with annual salary with ability to input different number of employees by years, with annual salary rise percentage, with monthly bonus and tax rate. Let me give you a couple of examples. Let it be CFO, which you are going to hire in March 20, 
you're not going to fire him so the fire date will be December 24 so annual salary can be $50,000 and this will be one CFO over the time so you may see one CFO which is one headcount starting from March till the end of the model which is December 24 also you can input 5% of salary growth rate you may see the amounts by years connected to this annual salary and impacted by annual salary rise. Let's set up 10% monthly bonus and 5% of tax rate. So you may see below the calculation of salary broken down by months, monthly bonus which is 10% and 5% of monthly ta taxes related to the payroll. Another option to be admin account, which will start April, which will grow till the end of the model with annual salary of $30,000. Let it be in year number one, two, then four, six, eight, and ten headcounts. Three percentage of annual salary grows, five percentage of monthly bonus and 5% of payroll tax rate. So in here you may see total staff numbers, which is 2 for the year number 1, 2020. Starting from year 2021 you have 4, then 6, 8 and 10 in the last year of the model. Again calculation of salaries for these two in this case, four that counts, calculation of bonuses, and calculation of monthly base taxes. You may see an income statement, total salaries and wages, and here you may see the total amount of bonuses, payroll taxes, and wages for these that counts. the variable expenses tab, you may set up up to six categories of your variable expenses as a percentage of total revenue. So on the left side you may see the names of your variable expenses line items, so you can type in any name if you would like. And on the right side you may see the variable expenses assumptions. So 10% means that for warehouse expenses in 2021 you will pay 10% of your total revenue. So it can grow over the time, for example, 12%, 14%, 16%, 18%. Or you can decrease this percentage over the time, 9, 8, 7, 6. Below you may see the calculation of these variable expenses. And finally, the income statement under the variable expenses category. You may see the line items and monthly values for your variable expenses. On the fixed expenses tab, you may input up to 15 line items for your fixed expenses. Let me show you how it works. For example, you have utilities. You will start pay starting from March 20 till the end of the model, which is December 24. You may see it here. Let's pretend periodicity will be daily with amount of $50 per day. So you may see this amount in here. It is calculated based on count of days within this month. So obviously in March 20 you have 31 days. That's why you will have 1550. In April you have 30 days. This means this will be $1500. Also you have ability to input some growth rate year over year. Once you input this growth rate, you will see that your utilities will grow over year over year. Let me give you a couple of other expenses types. For example, advertising. Let it start in March and finish in August 24. This will be on weekly basis with amount of $100 without any growth. So start, starting from March till August 24, you have $400 per month, which is four weekly payments each month. 
and that's it. Another option is B-Weekly, for example, $500. You can start from July, for example, and you'll have two payments, which is two B-Weekly payments within the month. $500 multiplied by two, you have $1,000 per month. Again, you can input some growth rate and you will see that your advertising expenses will grow year over year till the August 24, which is the last date of this expense type. Another option, office setup, which can be one time payment, which will happen in February 20 with the amount of $5,000. Obviously, you should not input any gross rates because this is just one-time fee. And you may see that office setup will happen in February 20 with this amount. Another option, insurance. Let it be start from January 20 till the end of the model. And it can happen monthly with $1,000 per month with 5% of gross First year, 3% of growth second year, 2% of growth third, and 1% year number four. So you may see this calculation here. Starting from January 21, it will grow for 5%, which is $50. And starting from January 22, it will grow for 3%, which is additionally $32. Another option, quarterly. You may see that insurance will be paid $1,000 each quarter. You can start it, for example, from February, and this will be shifted to one month forward. Another option, semi-annually. In this case, you will have insurance payments once per half a year, again, with a percentage of growth. And the last option is annual payments or yearly payments. You'll pay one time per 12 months starting from February till December 24. For each expense type, you can use growth rate and the calculation you may see in here. Also, in income statement, you may find total fixed expenses group. If you will ungroup this section, you can see these amounts broken down by months and by fixed expenses line items. the CapEx tab, you may input up to 20 development expenses categories. Let me give you a couple of examples. So, for example, office development with purchase date of February 20 with spending of $10,000. And you also can input payment delay. What does it mean? Let me set up two months, for example. It means that this amount will be accrued in February because of purchase date is February, but paid development expenses will be in April 20 for this office development. And you will have some balance of CapEx accounts payable for two months. Let me give you another example, other development expenses. Let's say March 20, $5,000 is zero payment delay. This means that this amount is accrued in March and paid in March as well. The total amount of development expenses you may find in Assets tab. By default, it has useful time for five years for the calculation of depreciation. You may find calculation of depreciation for development expenses in here. Here you may, you may also find capital expenditure and closing net book value. Additionally, you have up to six placeholders for other assets, for example, other assets with useful time of 10 years with cost of $25,000 and with launch date in April. You may find it in here. You can see capital expenditure. You may see book depreciation by months for this amount. And you may see closing net book value. 
the total amount of depreciation you may find in income statement on the cash flow you may find cash flow from investing activities for these assets and on the balance sheet you may find fixed assets amount under non-current assets and capex prepayment and capex payables as well on the capitalization table you can input different founders and investors contributions broken down by different dates of funding is different cost of share for each series and you can see the dilution of shares after each round and pre-money total equity and post-money total equity let's pretend that we have two founders founder one founder two so total amount of shares for founder one can be 10,000 for founder number two 20,000 Let's imagine that cost of share will be $2 and the date of founding is February. This means that investment for founder 1 is $20,000, for founder 2 is $40,000. In total they invest $60,000, which you may see here. The dilution is 34, 33 to 67 percentage of shares. So Let's pretend that for series A we have one investor and the date of issuance is May, cost per share is $5 per share and number of shares is 1000. So total amount of investment will be $5000. You may see that before the series A total equity was $60,000, after $65,000. And investor 1 will have 3.23 percentage of shares and the shares of founder 1 and founder 2 also diluted 32.26 and 46.52 percentage you can also input some amounts for series B and series C the same way you can set up the date cost of share and up to five investors is up to five placeholders for number of shares the amounts of funding you may see in the cash flow in the ordinary equity risings and you may see the balance sheet which shows you the total equity by months also on the top of the dashboard you have debt assumptions let me show you how it works so for the each debt, we are able to select the debt type. There are two debt types in the model, which is annuity and usual. Annuity means that each monthly payment, which consists your debt repayment plus interest expenses, will be equal each month. In case if you will select usual, your main debt repayments will be equal parts and interest will be just interest on the debts closing balance let me give you an example how it works so you may input some amount of the debt the launch date term can be 60 months and interest can be five percent you may also input the grant which is just simple amount which is paid in some specific months and that's it no repayments, no terms in terms of interest. So all the calculations of the debt you may see on the capital tab. Calculations for the debt number one, debt number two, debt number three. Total debts with grants. These calculations impact income statement, interest expenses, the cash flow, interest paid, debt drawdowns, debt repayments and on the balance sheet you have the debt closing balance on the top of the dashboard you have currency denomination and taxes setup so currency inputs means that you can input all your drivers for the model using one currency 
you have currency outputs it can be the same as currency inputs and it can be different from currency inputs so let me give an example and you input in United States dollars you have euro as an outputs and for this case you can set up currency exchange rate this is 1.2 for example in this case you will have in the model all your inputs in United States dollars all your outputs in euros and there will be conversion rate between currency inputs and currency outputs additionally you have denomination which means that you can denominate all your outputs on the reports in this example you have denomination is 1000 mean that your outputs is denominated by 1000 you can select millions you may see that now it is in million dollars you can set also billions or without any denomination additionally you have corporate tax setup you can change this number and this will impact tax expenses in your income statement I hope you enjoyed my video thanks for reviewing this uh, you can find more on my website finmodelslab.com and we'll see you later in the next videos